Five years ago today, April 6th, Mark Stein, I believe, broke it and printed the letter. Sam Hinkie resigned from the Philadelphia 76ers and, via a crazy long letter to the owners that somehow magically made it into Mark Stein's hands. Do you, I remember where I was. I also remember I've mentioned a few times talking you into doing a podcast, which you <laughs> were refusing to do. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine? Sam Hinkie resigns and we don't do one. A, a protest, a protest, <laughs> non pod. That's really that's how you that's how you hold the Sixers to account is by is by not doing a podcast. I think now, knowing what we know over the last two or three years, we're not very surprised that he's not in basketball. That he never came back in basketball and probably never will. I think if you took another further step back, isn't it kind of wild that he's not? That he never did it again? Like how many? people get to that level and just not only are not GMs again, but not assistant GM, don't work in a front office, yada, yada, yada. It is just pretty crazy. And it speaks to his sort of lunacy that he can go in and do it and then just never do it again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, he was an assistant for how long in Houston? He got there in, in 05 as a special assistant and then was promoted to VP in 07. And then sure. came to us in 2013. Yeah, yeah. So like eight years. So it was eight, yeah. eight years working up there, and and, who, and probably trying to get in before then. Mm-hmm. Gets to assistant GM, becomes GM of a team. At least in the sh- in the early part of it, could do could sort of see his plan out. Mm-hmm. He got ownership buy in to do what he wanted to do, and made the picks that he wanted to make. And until the Okafor pick, we, we will uh, we'll just hold it there. Um, and, and then to be like a barrage of league bullshit, a barrage of Colangelo's, like dealing with the shit you don't want to deal with. And then to be like, now that he knows the game and knows what he would do differently to just be like, and it's sort of this like infamous weirdo, uh, an infamous Mm -hmm. figure in the league, like almost like a boogeyman a little bit of. Like what they're used to, like the first one, like the sacrificial lamb. Like I don't, I don't know how like Adam Silver would react to him coming back. It would be incredibly hypocritical if if he was like blocking it anyway, whatever it is. But it is bizarre to be like you work up to something so much, you are that person for three years, mm-hmm. you endure a bunch of bullshit, and then be like, I'm done. I'm, I don't, I don't need it. I'm good. My perception is the reason that he's not back is that what he saw was the situation that he would need with ownership to want to do it. And he knows he's never going to find it like the odds, the odds of actually finding an opening at the time that you want the opening at the place with the people you want it to be. And then for you to get the job are, I just, what he knows he's not going to do is grind in the NBA just to get another GM job. Just doesn't not how he's built. I just wanted to read you some of the lines from the. Now he gets, the to, be, now he gets to be the owner, basically, and whatever VC right. bullshit he's doing. Right. Yeah. 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 Just you know, buy stuff and learn about learning and whatever <laughs> the, the, the picnics and whatever they were talking about, you know, and whatever. Uh, some lines from the uh, from the letter, just the opening. I hope this letter finds you well. I've been serving at the Sixers at your pleasure for the past 34 months. At Tool Gawande. Starting a, resigna- a 13-page resignation with, I hope this letter finds you well. Like you're sending it to like a, either like someone you're trying to scam or yeah. like a long-lost friend who you've had like a, a lot of animosity towards for like decades. Yeah, you probably talked to one of these people yesterday. I hope yeah. this letter finds you well. At Tool well, Gawande. That was like the first a, thing he wrote, and he just like never changed it. He was like, right, I, I guess I got to start with something. I hope this letter finds you well, something. And I'm like, I'll go back and change I'll change it. Change. At Tool Gawande, a surgeon at Brigham, Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, remains from afar one of my favorite reads. He laughs that, scientific, that reading scientific studies has long been, been a guilty pleasure. Reading investor les- letters has long been one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> this one is famous. This is a great one. Lastly, and th- by the way, this is on the first page. Lastly, this letter will only speak to the part of the business today that I am steward of, the basketball team and its attendant operations. 
With Scott O'Neill running our business operations, you are in good hands. I can assure you that when your team is eventually able to compete deep into May, Scott will ably and efficiently separate the good people of the Delaware Valley from their wallets on your behalf. Worry not. Which is... I mean, that's an, that's an iconic burn. Yes. Iconic. A um, couple other ones. Just some things he likes to do. Use a decision journal. Write in your own words what you think will happen and why before any decision. Refer back to it later. See if you were right. <laughs> Can you imagine going you're to just, dinner? Just tossing out some, some advice <laughs> yep. in a resignation New Z- letter. New Zealand's flightless bird, the MOA, yeah. measuring at 10 feet, 400 pounds, had the, life, had the life tramping around in the South Island for a great long run. Um, I still miss BlackBerry's keyboard. But the 2007 iPhone debut rendered it nearly obsolete to all but a few of us curmudgeons. Here we go. We have had the good fortune of drafting relatively early, give, giving us access to some of uh, some especially talented players, including Jaleel Okafor, Joel Embiid, and Nerlens Noel. Many in our office tried to set a line of when Jaleel would see his first double team in this league. Those with the under looked smart by the end of opening night when he went for 26 points and 7 rebounds. So still bragging about Jill Logofer. Um <laughs> We also put ourselves into position to draft in the second round where we found two 22-year-old gems to date, including Jeremy Grant and Rashawn Holmes. Outside of the top 60 selections delivered two more players with real NBA futures in 24-year-old TJ McConnell and 25-year-old Robert Covington. Robert is a mistake. I rubbed my own nose in for over a year. And then finally... Uh, a part that we did not even realize until several pods ago. In the interim, I'll probably be with my wife and kids for a few weeks. If you need to reach me, now or later, I'm available at redacted email address. And I suspect someday soon on Twitter via at Sam Hinky. Tweet at me. Tweet some, <laughs> tweet some recipes or any of our fun memories. <laughs> oh, boy. Now imagine, because Daryl did this. I mean, not a, not in the you know, not in this kind of letter. But imagine if Hinky sent this whole letter and then immediately like took over, like a different team, the Wolves. Yeah, like two weeks later. Yeah, that's, that's what Daryl did. That's yeah. what Daryl did. 